Good evening. I and my colleagues at the Friedrich Wilhelm von Junst Library of Forgotten Worlds would like to welcome you to our thrice-weekly news report, and thank you for listening to tonight's broadcast. I am Lector Finn J.D. John, Master Curator at the von Junst Library's Corvallis Branch, and it is good to have you with us tonight. Those of you who follow our Facebook page will already know this, but we have made some rearrangements to our broadcast schedule. First of all, the Council of Prefects has given me a new assignment, and I am very excited about it. One of the newer scholars of the Black Stone at our Stragoikovar branch brought an EVP recording device with him to Midsummer Night Ritual at the Black Stone this year. It is rather a special EVP recording device, of which more details in a moment. But I have been asked to do a full analysis of the recording, which is of a remarkable clarity and quality. You see, when the library was unable to sink in to Strigoikovar for the Blackstone ritual last year, Scholar-poet J. Jeffrey took advantage of the extra time to commission the manufacture of the most remarkable analog recording device it has ever been my privilege to view. It is wrought entirely in sterling silver, this recording device, and it makes its recordings on 16mm movie camera film, which, of course, is silver nitrate. Its internals convert the vibrations of sound waves into vibrations of a laser which expose a tiny track on the movie camera film in the form of a sound wave. The laser itself is the only part of this device that is not made of sterling silver. And we have confirmed that it works to capture EVP sounds, the sounds of spirits. Now, Scholar Jeffrey has used it to record the ritual at the Black Stone, and I have subsequently digitized the recording. All that remains is a detailed and thorough analysis. But unfortunately, this new assignment leaves me overtasked as regards the daily broadcasts. After due deliberation with the Council of Thirteen Prefects, here is what we have decided to do. Starting this week, our broadcasts will go out thrice weekly instead of the current every weekday schedule. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings, you will hear my voice bringing you news from the Von Junst Library. However, we will also be splitting the readings off from the regular broadcasts, and those will also be sent out thrice weekly, on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So the broadcasts will be a little shorter, but they will be better defined. Meanwhile, remember that next week is Pledge Week here at the Von Junst Library of Forgotten Worlds. Remember, the best Pledge Week is a short Pledge Week. The sooner we can get to our fundraising goal of 25 million Köln marks, the quicker we can get back to bringing you the kind of top-quality eldritch programming you've come to expect from the Von Junst Library of Forgotten Worlds. Remember, we've got a matching funds pledge from Mr. Theodore Ward of Providence, Rhode Island, so you get double the money when you pledge today. Plus, we've got a new Thonbuster premium, good for today only. Pick up your telephone and call in your pledge of 666 Köln marks or more, and we will rush you a Federal Express package containing a digital recording of the ancient ritual at the Black Stone at Stregoikovar. But hurry! This offer won't last. This is the point at which I usually queue up the day's reading. However, we'll be doing that in tomorrow's broadcast, so I hope you will tune in then, and in the meantime, grab your wallet and rush to your phone. We have a vast array of beige plastic rotary dial desk phones spread out all over the Charles Dexter Ward reading room at the library, just waiting for you to call in with your pledge. Or, of course, you can bring your gold to the library in person by coming to Dusseldorf on a clear moonless night, renting or purchasing a small cargo barge and loading your gold onto it, and silently paddling it down the Rhine until you see the great stone tower rising from its eastern banks. A word of warning, if you drop anchor, be sure to do so well before you get to the tower and let the current carry you. If you drop the anchor in the wrong place in that particular part of the Rhine, you could have a great deal of trouble on your hands. 
depending on whose house or palace you hit with the anchor. Perhaps that's all I should say about that, other than to suggest that if your anchor line comes to life as if seized by a giant hand at the bottom of the river, you should probably leap overboard and swim for shore as fast as you can go, and good luck. Good night, listeners, and as always, I wish you generous dreams.